Hi, this is Julie Waldorf, juliewaldorf.com, and I have Mr. Rusty Parvin here giving us update on that HOA blues. So, everything's even keel with those HOA blues? Is everything good, or what's going on? There, there can never be anything good about an HOA. Um, HOAs um, are, aren't, aren't a good, good thing to have, and so it can never be really good, but it depends on who you get on the board. Mm -hmm. It depends on how strongly it's enforced. Mm -hmm. If they enforce everything on an HOA, um, you couldn't have an organic garden, right? You couldn't have compost. Um, you couldn't even um, do anything that would be holistic and would be earth-saving because they, they're not into that kind of thing. You, they, don't want, they don't want you to save water or any of those kind of things. Mm -hmm, like you do. Yeah. But... We had, we had a new election. I ran for it. I didn't make it. Okay. Three people that are running for it. I think that they're going to keep things uh, mellow. Mm -hmm. And we've had... The elections every year? Yeah, every year, three mm -hmm. members. We've had 10 years of, of, of really cantankerous um, um, friction between the whole community. Okay. And hopefully, um, at some point, all those cantankerous folks have discovered that that has did them no good. Uh -huh. you, know, you have a neighbor, and your neighbors should be neighborly, mm -hmm. and you should uh, t do things in a, a positive way that works for everybody. Mm -hmm. And they haven't, and they found it hasn't worked. And so, according to uh, my neighbor up the hill, they says, "Well, Rusty, you've taught them a little bit lesson. Uh -huh. like maybe you need to be nicer to people and need to work with people a little bit better." And All right. So hopefully, that's what's going to happen. Okay, great. So you have some reasonable people then, it sounds like, on the board, so everything should be even keel this year. Uh, we have one from last year mm -hmm. that doesn't have a reasonable bone in his body. Okay. <laughs> he has just one vote. Okay. We have one that's on, on the cuff. Uh-huh. And then we have a lady that's up the street that I think is reasonable. Okay. And, and, and so um, I'm sure that there'll be some discussion, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that uh, all three of them have other things in their life they want to do mm -hmm. besides to have... Micromanage people's lives in their neighborhood. Yeah, it takes time. It takes time um, to tell them to move their hose <laughs> and, and <as laughs> on you, a nightly basis. <laughs> as you know, we went last year to the arbitration. Um, we arbitrated things, mm -hmm. and that took um, a whole day. Yeah, that do. was ridiculous. Right, and and we accomplished some things. I had to give up some things. They gave up some things, mm -hmm. and so the president knows that that arbitration is sitting there. That if he wants to do it again, that, that he can sit there all day again. Yeah. Hopefully, he, he, you know, there's no way if you have an organic garden and, and if you're are environmentally uh, composting and all that kind of stuff that you can fit into an HOA. And and so, little by little, other my neighbors are becoming organic and mm -hmm. they're doing this holistic type thing. Right. Things and will change. It's catching on. Yeah. Things will change. In HOAs, you know, what I, what I know of HOAs, I had one way out in the country when I lived in Divide, Colorado. Where we all had an acre plus to 35 acres, and yeah, you could have compost. They were really up there to, to fix the trails for hiking and horseback riding, and um, it worked well. We did have a whole house, and we only paid $100 a year, <laughs> and it was reasonable. And they did were accountable for the money. They didn't spend it on lawsuits. They spent it on the Halloween party for the kids. So, um, you know, and they had it dialed in from the get-go, and... and they knew what they were doing. The developer really put it together well. They didn't make it where it was a money-making thing. It was a community thing for people to work together and play together in this playground in this house that we call using these lakes, and it was great. But And we could do compost, and we could have RVs if we wanted or whatever. That, there was nothing really unreasonable for what we had. And But when you're in um, a big city and you have, or even a little town like Slow with 50,000 people or so, um, to have an upper end neighborhood. Yeah, people do want it nice and neat and clean, but to be micromanage is a little nuts to tell you to um, um, not have a garbage can outside your garage on the side of the house um, that you can't see anything. You have to have it inside the garage, or you can't park your, park your car in, um, in your driveway overnight. Things like that are a little out of control with controlling. And that's kind of where Stone Ridge 2 was going, sending out letters and being a little nuts. You know, but now you're saying there's reasonable people on there that are not going to um, harass people out of the neighborhood because they don't like the way they, their lifestyle is and that they may compost a little bit. Or I, I'm in hopes I had over 100 requests of things they wanted me to do last year. Yeah, and they were, that's a little micromanaged, I say. Yeah. I mean, golly gee. 
you know, even you know people who have rentals, they can't tell people how to live inside those walls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> We're talking an HOA. You own your home and you can't. <laughs> you know, in my bushes, I had little little things for birds, and they wanted those removed. You know, um, um, materials for bird nesting that I had in my plants. And I uh -huh. had some right down there. You can't see it's in the dark. There's a, a whole lot of things where the birds come and they take out mm -hmm. pieces of macrame and pieces mm -hmm. of different things, little pieces of string, mm -hmm. and uh, they take it off for their nesting. Right. And um, it it it, it um, was ridiculous. Yeah, it was ridiculous because it was only a couple strings. You purposely put that there, and you do have birds in the yard because of it, which is lots great. Of birds. Yeah, lots of them. But you almost have to laugh when you read the list. You know, yeah, it like it'll ridiculous. take me five seconds to remove something they wanted removed. Yeah, and then the board has to completely um, look it over, talk about it. They have to send it to their lawyer. The mm -hmm. lawyer has to approve it. Cha ching, cha ching. They have to look through the CC and yeah. to see if if that is in there. And a lot of things aren't in there, but it, in the CC, our CC and says that the architectural review um, has 100% say in your yard. You can't do anything in your yard that wasn't originally in there without permission. Yeah. So when, when I put my planter boxes there in the yard, yeah. that was what they said. Well, you didn't have permission for those planter boxes. And the architectural review people have been the same ones here since the beginning of time. And they're the little, little, little uh, folks that um, cling together. Mm -hmm. And if there's somebody that they don't like, you could ask them to put an umbrella on your porch and you probably wouldn't get permission to do it. Yeah, yeah. which is, yeah. It's, again, it's your micromanagement and it's your um, selective code enforcement um, given to authority of um, um, to people who shouldn't have it, and they spend your money hiring attorneys instead of actually bringing the quality up in life for the neighborhood. It's taking it away because you're getting harassed. <laughs> but hopefully there are reasonably people now on the board, and, and that life will go on and everything will go even keel for another year. Well, what, what they said that there, there's enough people here that complained. They said okay. There was enough people that complained about my garden Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and so if you look around some places, some of the gardens are manicured, just right, perfect, yeah, right. And some of them are unruly and rustic, like mine is unruly and rustic, and full of fruit trees, full of berries, full of birds, full of ladybugs, full of um, butterflies, and it's f full of nature, um, um, horny toads and lizards, snakes, mm -hmm. yeah. And and so this is the kind of garden you have to have a habitat for them, otherwise they w w wouldn't come here, they wouldn't stay here. Right. And people that are, don't understand habitat for, for wildlife, um, and if they understand manicure, it's contrary to, to what feels good to them. And mm -hmm. for me to have a manicured garden, um, like a mobile home park, you know, nothing wrong with mobile home parks, but their manicured gardens are required with rocks and a pot here and there and, and that kind of stuff. They don't have a lot of growing up trees. There's no room for it. Mm -hmm. But and, there is room here. And you yeah. have a 7,000 square foot lot. You should be able to have... You know, put trees on there. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in California. <laughs> so. I, and if you notice, I can reach here and I can pick um, peaches right off my deck. The peach yeah. tree is down there, 20 feet down there. And here's my peach tree. And I have apricot trees and plum trees. And I can just walk out of the top of my deck and pick fruit, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. And then if I'm on the bottom, I can pick them from the bottom. Yeah, so you have a functional yard. Yeah. So, great. Thank you. Okay, well, this is Julie Waldorf, juliewaldorf.com. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.